Hi everyone, it's Patrick Rees and welcome. This is an incredible event, XTV Oil Masterclass. Um, and um, yeah, just just thought I'd say hi. Um, during this this masterclass, this this webinar, I want to bring to you all of my experience in trading oil. Um, obviously, Russia and Ukraine will will be a part of that. But there's a whole lot of more to oil than meets the eye. And um, with the volatility um, in March absolutely exploding, um, oil was at the very heart of that. So just a couple of um, bit of some admin and etiquette. If you do have any comments, please do uh, leave them. Um, I try and answer any questions you have along the way. And um, well, we'll also be having some time at the end of the masterclass to to answer anything you feel you need me to dig a bit deeper on or just um, something I haven't answered correctly to or, or anything really or or any other kind of things that you think of along the way. So so, yeah, like I say, um, welcome. Um, this is the second time I've done this, but the the first time was 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 great. We're talking about inflation and um, uh, central banks and, and how all that works. Um, and today, I feel um, I just want to get it out there. Uh, oil is very misunderstood and it's incredibly complex and it's very hard to trade. But if you just follow some simple rules, um, that's why I'm here. So you can trade it successfully and, and in a safe way. Um, you just got to know what you're dealing with. Um, and, you know, my background of, of trading oil was in the futures contracts pits from 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 way back and you know i used to trade wti futures um uh, they really moved a lot so so all of that to come and you know welcome and, and thanks again for joining so um i'm gonna toggle on my screens now here we go so here we are that's that's the, i'm co-founder of the adamus principle we are um market experts, we, we fixed income, FX, um, and obviously um, we do trade commodities. But we're, at the heart of it, I would say, um, if you cut me open, you'd say you'd see FX inside. But in my beginning, in my early career, I did trade every pretty much every single asset um, available and oil and commodities um, were very, very part of that. Um, one thing I will say, if you do like trading oil, if you do like trading um, gold, um, you've got to really understand everything that goes into that. So you've got to understand dollar, right? So oil is often, um, uh, you know, a divergent or, or um, you know, antithesis in the correlation to, to oil and, and gold too. Not always. Not like other other assets, but certainly it, it does come into the mix. Um, war is very, very important. Supply and demand are very, very important. Um, OPEC is incredibly important. All of these things, just you really, really, um, it, it will save you a lot of money, a lot of pain, a lot of heartache um, if you really have to, you have to brush up on these subjects, okay? So, so we are a damaged principal. I'm co-founder. My my business partner is Adam. I'm just going to have a slurp of tea. Excuse me. That's very British, I know. Um, so, really, my my career, I wasn't an out and out right trader. I was kind of retail, pretty much no experience, and I had a very good opportunity. Just a quick sort of brief of background. I had a very quick opportunity to um, not quit. Um, incredible opportunity to trade futures contracts on the institutional side to to leap over that fence, that very high wall um, between retail and institutional. Um, and I took it. You know, um, at the time I wasn't young. I was in my late thirties. I was. I knew pretty much nothing. Um, I was tr day trading on, you know, various spread betting platforms and, and all the rest of it. And then um, I, I got a job as a futures trader. Um, I rented a desk and, and I started, you know, trading with the big boys. Right. So it took me about at least a year before I actually started to make some proper money. 
Um, and then, uh, yeah, my second year was really, really good. Um, I then moved to um, trade spot effects, a small um, uh, liquidity provider and, and hedge fund from New York called Edgewater. And that's where I met my, my business partner right now. So Adam is the guy at the top. Um, and about five years ago, we started the Adams Principle. And primarily our, our mission, well, I certainly had a, I wanted to have this mission to tell the truth about trading and to tell the truth about how it's done. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of myths about, um, you know, alchemy and, you know, the, the one size fits all and finding an indicator that will tell you everything. It's rubbish. It's utter nonsense. You've got to, it's trading hard work, but it's not impossible. And, um, you know, if you're a retail trader or you're a savvy retail trader or you're a complete beginner, you know, this um, masterclass is is probably I'm just going to frame it up for you. Um, you. You might have to step up a bit if you don't understand some of the concepts or or things I'm talking about. Then ask me. Um, just get in contact with the XTV team. Just post the question in the comments. Ask me anything you want. All right. I'm here to help because um, I've been there. I've done it. Right. So so Adam and I. Um, you know, we had this mission about, you know, telling the truth and education. And um, Adam, uh, he runs our, our recruitment arm, which uh, is about a year and a bit old and does business development and business consultancy. I head up the education arm. We're based down in, in Bishopsgate. So we are market experts. Um, we cover spot effects, fixed income, all kinds of debt, basically, and equities. And and we have a whole host of trusted associates who um, we we bring on board if you know if you have a problem or a challenge we parachute in and we just sort it out. Um, my big uh, thing that wakes me up at night and gets me up bouncing out of bed in the morning is is getting a, a nugget or a, or a rough diamond and, sh and polishing it into putting them into a seat at a real prop desk. All uh, right, so like a futures desk that's why i say a real prop desk trading institutional um, amounts of size so um that's something i love doing that's something i'm going to continue to do obviously i trade my own book and i'm always always asking questions in the marketplace in in social media platforms like linkedin which i really like by the way i really respect um, um but there are obviously um great platforms out there that's just my preferred choice um so yeah we do have trusted associates all of the people we we hire have worked here right i mean what a lineup this is why we are qualified to talk about trading all right the, have a look at this all of us have worked here now i've never worked in a bank but i've worked in a hedge fund I've also worked in the biggest prop desk in the world, and that is Tower Trading TTG. All right. So I've been a bit of a semi-star, <laughs> not really, just been on the radio and, uh, you know, I'm doing a, a, a lot of newspaper because um, uh, articles, um, the Mirror, the Express and tabloid stuff, but also the Telegraph and some broadsheets, potentially the Guardian coming up. But I've been on ITV News, BBC London Radio, um, you know, and I, I, I get asked to make comment on um, the UK's interest rates or global macro or stuff like this. And it's really, I love it. It's really, really enjoyable. And it's only really happened in the last few years, says me on, on ITV News. Um, and I got interviewed on the Telegraph about crypto, just put some of my portfolio in there. But today we're really talking about oil and gold and commodities in general. So here are some of the um, publications I've been on. Metro, I'm in quite a lot. I'm actually doing a um, thing for the Express. I've got after this, I'm actually being interviewed by the Express on Russia and Ukraine on, on the second wave of sanctions, actually. So that's coming out, should be coming out in a couple of days. Um, yeah, Reuters, I've been, I, I go on glo their global markets forum as well. So yeah, I think it's incredible, uh, you know, as a trader, as a, as a finance expert, um, it's incredible for me, who didn't really start like that, 
you learn on the desk and I'm now I've been doing it for about 15 years so it really is um, it shows you that if you just put your mind to it you get a good mentor and you ask completely the, the most stupidest questions it doesn't matter you've got to swallow your pride just ask the question the amount of questions I've asked that I get quite short responses to um, are, are incredible because I do feel it doesn't matter you're there to learn and you know what Google and the internet and research and there's so many great resources out there um, and you'll find that you just have to do the digging um, so yeah these are our partners um, I'm visiting lecturer at the University of Cambridge um, we've got various partners all around the world um, and this is what we're going to talk about today now I sort of thought I came here I, I've been sort of thinking about what I'm going to talk about and what I want to say is you know I want to kind of lift the lid up on on what's inside oil what moves it how it ticks and a lot of the things I'm going to give to you um really um I'm hoping will be the beginning because you've got to take those things and you've got to do your own research right you've got to really understand um you know i i really really don't favor those kind of educators who go look buy here sell there signals all this rubbish right what i do do is i teach you how to fish so you can do your own fishing forever so these are the concepts so this is what we're going to talk about today really um we're going to really talk about march because oil went off off the roof it just went explosion time um we're talking about trading type of strategies in high risk situations now part of this is looking at the risks involved and if you can factor in those risks you're halfway there you really are um we have uh, when i was at tower trading there was a trader an oil trader he used to do about he used to trade wti i won't tell you his real name but he was we called him the bulldog because oil as uh, the nickname for oil is the bulldog and the reason for that is because it won't let go sometimes when it will go limit up it will never stop and it will be like if you're trying to fade that move or you say oil's rallying you're trying to sell into that rally it just won't give up so that's why we call it the bulldog um and yeah we just talk broad broad commodities what really goes into that and then um the final thing really is the five top tips on trading oil this is not correct i'm going to warn you it's not five it's actually about 15 because i put in five and i thought oh hold on maybe they'll they want to want to know this oh hold on i'm going to throw that well i can't say that without that and then all of a sudden that five has actually grown into about 15 things you need to know so um so i've just ra really rammed it full of uh of goodies Okay, some more tea before I carry on. Um, so I really want and I really wish for you to know um, what are the three main things that you will learn in this masterclass? Well, I want you to come away with this knowing what factors um, or what drivers are in oil, right? So you may have your own ideas, supply, demand, you may have um, CRB index, map, OPEC, all of that stuff. Um, I want you to kind of know that and know how much um, oil moves on risk and uh, war as well. So th these are things as well. And obviously, dollar. You've got to you've got to remember, like anything, anything you're trading, you need to involve currencies. This is something I I cannot stress enough. If you if you're just like a gold bug or you you know you're an oil bug or whatever it is if you know nothing about the dollar you, you, it's like fighting with one arm honestly if you know nothing about opec forget it right honestly with oil forget it okay so um i'm then going to teach you some tried and tested strategies to trade oil in a safe way and then the third thing i think you probably gathered we're going to do just touch gently touch on some of a broad understanding of commodities okay so i'm just going to some of the comments now 
Okay, welcome. Good day, Mikey's Life. Um, Mikey's Life, you just asked me, can I use the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ to gauge how I can enter a trade in oil? For example, if S&P goes up, can I look to enter a short on oil? This is with other confirmations like volume and price action. No, right? A very simple no. Let me tell you something, Mikey. Um, okay. Oil goes up with a good feeling, with risk on. We call risk on, which is my an appetite for risk. When equities go higher and everyone's feeling great in the world, oil can go higher. Because when equities go higher, everything is, um, is fueled, so to speak, if you pardon the pun. So that means dollar goes lower, right? So when dollar goes lower, oil goes higher, generally. Not always, but generally. So I would say if you're looking to use the S&P, do not trade oil. One thing I will say is um, there's so many other factors to oil you've got to remember. So there, there, there's lots and lots of things. Um, and, and I would definitely not use the S&P. It depends on a lot of other things. Um, one, one thing I will say, let's just say a war is not, say everything um, everything calms down in Russia, Ukraine. So this is to Mikey's life. Um, let's just say we're in, uh, we're in, let's just say last year, right? Um, if dollar yen, which is tightly correlated with the S&P and 10 year yields, if they're both grinding higher, you want to probably buy oil, right? Because that's risk on. And that means you've got a nice fuel under GDP in the US. Yeah, inflation's ticking higher, but not too much. But obviously it's not. But that's in a, that's in a Goldilocks situation. So, yeah, you would probably want to, in a, in a risk on environment, you probably want to start nibbling in some bids in, in, in WTI or any oil. Uh, price, but definitely not a direct correlation with the S&P. That's just my opinion, of course. Um, and, you know, I, I've traded both S&P futures and, and WTI futures. So I hope that's helpful, uh, Mikey's life. Okay. So back to the uh, masterclass. Um, I just want to show you something. So this is quite a scrunched up chart, but I want you to get your own charts out. Right. So I want you to get your own charts out and look at oil. So this is WTI. In March, I think it was March or April, it went negative. At one point, it went from minus 40. This is just to really highlight both what it shouldn't have done and what, and what it can do. Um, I know a lot of big oil traders who would bid at zero, just above zero. And they're like, there's no way it can go negative. There's no way. Right? It did. 40 bucks. Boom. Yeah. So taking a lot of hedge funds out to the cleaners, a lot of oil funds in Dubai got cleaned out when that happened because it did something it shouldn't have done. Right. That's that's just really, really, that tells you everything you need to know about oil. All right. No problem, Mikey's life. Thanks. It happened. It helped. No problem. So that really tells you a lot about oil. OK. Um, and look, you know, March was absolutely crazy. It spiked, you know, 10, 15 figures. OK. Um, now. That's just like my opening gambit for oil. And you really have to. I'm going to really keep it super simple and I want you to just really have have a look at some of this right so let's get straight down to the facts okay oil is very 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 complicated right but you can make it easy if you understand what I'm going to tell you right you factor in the risk it's all about risk right so it's probably the most complex asset in the world. It goes higher with risk on and risk off. I'll give you an example. Risk on is, is when everyone wants to buy risk assets. Usually with risk on, the dollar goes lower. They both counter because dollar's the, the global reserve, right? So when there's risk on, sometimes, as I said previously, oil will go higher. 
it's it's like everyone feels really good. So that means that businesses are going to expand. They're going to hire new people. They're going to move up their prices because they expect the customers to be queuing around the block. They're going to buy bigger cars, bigger houses. They're going to pump their, their, their petrol a bit more, you know, with those bigger cars, those faster cars. That means oil is in demand. When it's in demand, the price goes higher, right? So that's risk on. But hold on a minute. What happened in March was the opposite. It was risk off, right? Because that's a war. That's the lack of demand. Sorry, apologies. That's the lack of supply. So oil can go higher and lower on a good story or a bad story. That's how complex it can be. And that's just one small thing. All right. Just bear that in mind. OK. The other thing that really twist used to twist my head when I started trading futures is this bad boy. Look, oil involves physical and futures. They all have to match on expiry. Now, if you're trading futures every three months, it has to match expiry. And I'm going to kind of talk about contango and, and, and backwardation, but I'm not going to labor on that because this is a you know slightly bit more advanced. But really, bottom line, oil is at the whim of OPEC and market supply. That obviously involves demand. OK. Saudi is the biggest player. It's just a fact. In the US, you've got shale. That's fine. Um, but Saudi is the absolute biggest player in, in, a, in OPEC. And as you, as I said, if oil went negative, this is at the same time Saudi's flush supply. Okay. What does this all mean? It means oil does crazy things, right? Just bear that in mind. Um, the other thing about oil is, is it raises all inflation tides. Um, I spoke to the Office of National Statistics. I'll get my words out now. The ONS. I spoke to the ONS uh, recently. And uh, we were just discussing um, the effect. What's the biggest effect of inflation? Not just in the UK, but like in the US, like anywhere in the world, Germany, anywhere. Guess what? It's oil. And the headline, maybe not the core, but the headline. But if the if the headline in inflation is high, it will drag up the core to some extent. This is how powerful oil is. All right. So when oil spikes, inflation will spike. Um, WTI and Brent crude, excuse my awful spelling. They're the most popular. And then obviously the US have, you know, shale. OK. So trading oil has a lot of warning. Um, and when you're thinking of oil, you don't don't just think of oil. You've got to think of oil currencies and oil countries. And here are the oil currencies. That's Canadian. That's the NOC. That's the SEC. That's the MEX. That's the RUB. Can anyone guess what they are? If you leave in the comments, let's have a look. Tobo, hello. Okay, while you're thinking about leaving what these uh, countries are, I'm going to try and answer your question, Toba. Sorry about my pronunciation. Um, could the price of crude oil have gone up if one of the countries involved in this war isn't a major player in the oil industry? Um, let me just get my head around this question, Toba. Could the price of oil gone up if one of the countries involved? Probably not. Um, obviously, Russia is a big player. But you, dollar does go higher on risk off. So that that is key. And that, that could be a, you know, a big factor. But yeah, so because Russia is a big player in oil, it, it's absolutely key. Canada is the same. Um, so, yeah. Um, Saudi, obviously, but the, uh, the Norwegian krona and the uh, Swedish krona, they're key as well. So all of these currencies are very important if you're trading oil. Why is that? 
because you can hedge them. You can use them and you don't have to trade oil. You can trade the currency, right? Or you can trade an oil basket, an ETF, and you can get your ETF and you can go, look, I, I love a bit of oil, have like, you know, WTI in there, but you can have like some kind of hedge out, like you can have a bit of gold, you can make it into a like a CRB index, but a baby one, or you can have a bit of like dollar in there as well. So you're hedging out a bit of that oil risk. Um, who, who knows, you might have a bit of Aussie in there. So some Australian stuff. So you, you're broadening that into a commodity ETF. So all of these things, just bear in mind when you're trading oil. Um, obviously, green energy is now a big contender, but it's not going to be a, uh, a replacement. So is everyone uh, clear so far what I'm talking about? Just leave a, a, a post in the comments or the chat. Um, if there's any any questions or is there, there's anything you want me to go back on, just let me know as we go along. Okay. I've got news. I'm going away next week. I'm going to Dubai to have a few meetings with some banks and hedge funds. I'm also going to meet some big oil traders. Um, so, yeah, thanks, Mikey's life. So far, yes, clear. Brilliant. That's good to know. Um, so I know some traders in, in Dubai, some of them are ex-Emirates, um, and Dubai's the place if you want to get closer to oil. Um, and really, um, I'm going to be talking to them to see what their take is on, on what next for oil. Um, now, this is uh, something I, I would just, you know, if you, if, you, if you have any questions you want me to bring to them, I'm absolutely happy to do that. And maybe at another point, um, Thank you, Mikey. Um, we can bring that again to you guys. So, yeah, no problem. OK, so I'm off to Dubai on the 13th of April um, and uh, I'm going to meet some oil traders. I'm going to ask them what they think, what their view is, um, you know, straight from the horse's mouth, um, which is great for me. So we know why oil is called the bulldog. One of the nicknames for one of the biggest oil traders I, I, I used to sit near um, at Tower Trading was called the bulldog and um you know we know why it's called because it won't let go um i'm going to talk about backwardation in Tong contango um in a few slides later okay now my five top tips here we go um i can't believe this that this is actually not five top tips it's it's about 15 but um what you need to do when you're trading oil don't get, please don't go all in okay you're, you're going to get a margin call look at the atr look at the absolute ranges for march right that's what you're dealing with so when you're trading it always always try and measure it up to another asset to Really, I really recommend this, and I've done this for you at the end of this masterclass. Um, compare oil to how it moves to, say, euro dollar or, say, the S&P in a day's range or a year's range. And you could do it yourself. You can get ranges highs and lows from, say, Bloomberg. It's free. You go on the website and you can get the, the ranges from the high and low. Just bang up a chart yourself, right? write them down, get those ranges, and then you can form your own kind of index. Um, have a look at CRB. So this is the Commodity Reuters Index. Um, you can you know, bang this up on, on pretty much most. I think TradingView do it. I'm, I'm sure you can get it um, on most things. Uh, but yeah, I mean, um, you, know, you, could, you can get it obviously on, on the XT. XTP platform, but yeah, so so keep an eye on the CRB index. Use inflation and reflation and dollar. Have a look at that. So if things are, you know, if there's risk on, and what's the dollar doing? Is it going lower? So it's making things cheaper. So people are buying more risk. That has a nice effect on oil for a trend higher. Um, and just before you trade just have those you need deep pockets to i say deep pockets i mean you need to define those pockets because 
essentially you cannot be training the same size as say what you'd be doing on um, euro dollar or um, dollar yen all right so just be careful of that and patience too right um the other thing i used to do when i was trading oil was i used to if i was let's just say i went long wti i would look to hedge out some of that risk so take some of that risk away by doing the opposite in a currency so i i might go long dollar cad or, or short cad short knock or short sec that's just what i would probably do that would make that trade net net a lot less risky because you're essentially hedging out some of that and you i would say before you start to look at oil just look at all the different oil type things um i say things i mean assets that can actually say look you know what um instead of just going like yeah all in on one asset just try try and sort of say look okay well i'm just trying to maybe capitalize on the asset going higher or lower whatever you want to choose but then want to kind of circumvent my risk a little bit by just going in and, and trading the opposite in a currency or a different asset so that's that's my advice on there here are some more tips and considerations i've been thinking of so um things to look out for um is oil it will it be negative to dollar um sometimes sometimes not not in a war um and then as i said previously try and hedge out some currencies or etfs or or even equities you know um sometimes you might for example go a little bit bespoke and go like let's just say i'm shorting wti but then i i really i'm not bearish uh, commodity so i'll go long aussie dollar so Australia is the biggest iron ore producer. China's the biggest consumer because they make iron ore and turn it into steel, right? So let's just say, um, you know, you, you could be bullish global growth. You could be bullish China. You could be bullish Aussie, but you're bearish oil, right? So you could, you could short WTI and go long Aussie dollar as a hedge. That's another little tip. but. I'm not giving you any advice, obviously. I'm just telling you some some of the things that you can look at. And that's why it's so important to look at just, not just look at oil, but look at all of the other commodity um, assets, both in currencies and ETS and shares and, and all of these things. And then um, look at some of the crosses in those, like NOCMEX, CADMEX, NOCSEC. You know, look at the CRB index. Look at Brent crude spreads with WTI. Look at the months. You know, all of these things, they're really helpful, super helpful. Um, so, yeah, I would say, um, okay, another question so far from Toba. Are there similarities between trading crude oil and trading natural gas? <laughs> yeah, you, you need to be a bit crazy trading both of them. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah um natural gas is absolutely probably oil on steroids so um they i would not put them in the same pot um uh, natural gas is a lot more risky um and you know if you're going down the energy route it, it really you really need to know a whole lot more um but with i would say oil gold um nickel a lot of those kind of commodities coal they might form in the same pot but maybe not natural gas toba okay hope the hope that's just that's just my take on it okay now all other things affecting oil global yields always keep an eye on the 10 year 10 year yield um they're the benchmark as in in the us obviously europe it's the bund which is the 10 year german um, but the US Tino, we call it the Tino, um, it's the yield on the 10 year. Reflation, that's a big thing. You know, I said that just before. Um, US macro, right, there's another thing. When things are looking good, now the US macro is in a pretty good position. We had great jobs recently. You know, you might get a lift on oil on that. 
Um, but obviously dollar, that's the counter to oil as well. War we know about, risk on, risk off, all of these things affect oil. Um, to get a broad, you know, taking a step back, to get a broad um, overall um, trend, look at the CRB index um, and look at other commodities and um, the push and pull and the, and the, and the peaks and the troughs of all of those other cur um, currency, uh, sorry, currency, uh, oil currencies and commodities as well. So, um, yeah, the other thing I will say uh, today is reduce your clip size and increase your stops. It's simple, but people forget it. I mean, sometimes if you're looking at a trend like the war was crazy, um, you know, just we, we went so much higher, I think. WTI up to 130, and it's come off a lot from that. What I did to check that was was look at dollar ruble, and that gave up. Um, dollar ruble screamed higher, 30 figures, I think it was. It came back, gave it all back basically, but that was because of the uh, central bank, the CBR in Russia, propping up the ruble. That affects oil, right? It all affects oil, okay? Um, so yeah, when things calm down, you know, you could fade, you could have faded that oil, but you really needed to know what you were doing. So often what I do with oil, if I'm thinking oil's far too high, I, you know, you, you could look at going in very, very small around 15%, but that's just me. Um, so really my advice to you on that is just be patient, um, you know, just just really understand all the oil, different types of oil assets, try and hedge out some risk and then just start slowly. Don't go all in. It really does. It really will save you. Um, yeah. One thing I do like is long term fibs. Now, um, what I might do is after this masterclass is send out a fib with a long term chart on oil. I can do that with the XTB um, family. They're, 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 they're fantastic people. Um, so I can do that, no problem. And if there is any requirements that, you know, you, you want to go further on, I'll, I'll let you uh, just ask. You know, we're, we're here to help, okay? Um, so, yeah, the other thing I will, um, <laughs> will say, OPEC, right? So look at the flows pre-OPEC meetings. Um, look at the expectations. Are they going to reduce supply? Obviously, that'll mean oil go higher. They're going to stand pat. They're going to um, increase daily barrels. Um, in you know, all of these things really, really matter with the price of oil as well. Um, the 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 other thing is, um, you know, long the long term view. Have a look at the long term view now. Um, I'll briefly go into backwardation in Contango in a second but before that point number four here i think we're on about 15 points altogether but point number four is um the key thing about having a soft spot a soft stop is an area where you know you have your hard stop that's fine but just be very very careful if you're if you're if you've got your hand over the mouse i really do not recommend it unless you are a professional oil trader and, and most of you are you know, obviously, I think you're retail. So, so please do not do that. Just always have a fixed stop and, um, you know, uh, and, and watch your risk. Now, can anyone tell me what this is? I'm going to leave uh, a little bit, a few minutes for you to post in the chat. And uh, I'm going to have a sip of my tea while I wait. Don't all start. Um, <laughs> it doesn't look that weird, does it? Go on, have a guess. Well, I'm getting no takers. Okay, never mind. All right. So what this is, is a, a kind of a risk SWOT analysis. Um, it's something I did uh, a couple of years ago. And basically what I did, it's basically uh, from uh, the range from lows to high, right? So 
these numbers here yes uh les macrio roberts hi les strengths weaknesses of yes absolutely absolutely you're absolutely right um now the thing about this les is you th these are strengths weaknesses opportunities and threat but it's within the uh, framework of risk so um they are you're absolutely right but what i want to show you is i've assigned numbers and these numbers are this these are the amount of big figures or hundreds of pips that um, each asset has moved in one year. So Euro dollars moved 900 pips. Cable is, is sterling dollar, basically. Cable is what institutions, uh, lovable nickname, um, uh, call it, is, is, had moved 14 in one year. Now, oil had, has, had moved 34. Now, what I've done is, in a very kind of basic way, but simple is good sometimes in risk, is, is put these in ratios and put them in an index. So I've compared 9 to 34. Basically, I've divided one into the other and got this. Right? So... What this tells you, right, now oil I haven't, I purposely not put in there. What this tells you is benchmarking the euro dollar volatility, which is like the biggest and li most li liquid currency pair. Based on that, how much more risky is oil based on the range, on the volatility? And 34, which is go back on that slide. 34 to 9 is basically 3.7 to 1, right? That means that if you're used to trading something like the euro dollar, whatever, and you jump to oil, right, nearly four times the amount of risk is involved based only on range. Just let that sink in. Honestly, if you don't learn anything today, learn this. This is why oil traders get done. They get carted out because they don't understand the risks involved. Honestly, just, just let that sink, right? Dollar round. That's the mad, the absolute crazy pair. That's 25 times the amount of risk. You know, sterling yen, absolute crazy, crazy pair. I used to trade sterling yen. That's only 2.55 times the amount of risk. But oil is 3.7. So really just take that on board, all right? Um, it, it's super important. And then next time you're trading oil, you're going to be like, well, actually, maybe I'm just going to take it easy and just start small, all right? Is that all clear so far? What about you, Les? Is that sort of clear to you? Right, just a little bit of um, institutional education for you. I'm gonna briefly talk about backwardation versus to contango. Now, in, in, in its very, I do not trade these, by the way. Um, they're very, very tricky, but I have done. But in its kind of, yes. Okay, well, look, if there's any questions, we're going to leave a little bit of time at the end, um, so so no problem. Um, backwardation is when the price of futures contract is lower. Now, this was invented by Keynes, eminent economist, and Contango is the opposite. It's when a futures contract is higher than spot and usually traders will trade the arbitrage in between all the difference or the spread in between those. And every three months they have to be the same price. That's essentially what it is. Don't, if you see these words, avoid them. You don't need to really know, but I'm telling you, there's a bit of an education on the institutional level. This is what a lot of oil traders do, just to give you a little bit of a flavor of what, how complex oil is basically. Okay, very simply, what happened to oil when Russia invaded Ukraine? 
you could have got on this move, no problem. This is what happened to dollar ruble, screamed all the way higher, and it's kind of given most of it back now. And this is the WTI chart. After that negative, it just, just went on and on. I think the, the high was around 130. Um, very difficult to trade this, but if you've been patient and, and chipped in and put in some bids all the way down, you probably, you know, you'd have been done okay. You would have been okay. But seriously, um, I would say, oh, did it? Is there a recording to watch out a later date? I do believe there is, did it? Do you believe? But check with the XTB team. But they're uh, they're a nice bunch, so I'm sure they they'll be they'll be able to help you out. Okay. Um, really, in a nutshell, what happened with Ukraine and and Russia? Oil exploded higher. That's it. Um, and and you know, sometimes I mean I know personally I know a lot of oil traders that got keened out from that. Thank you. There you go. You see how quick is that? Yes, this is recording. Brilliant. Um, so that's what happened to oil. Um, now, to be a good oil trader, do you need to know everything about geopolitics uh, in a war environment? Probably. I have to say in March you did. Because you had a lot of um, miscommunication. You had a lot of fake news. You had a lot of um changing invasions reinvasions re re retreats you had a lot of talks that broke down you had everything so oil was moving around so yeah you do and if you do, if you're not an expert on war or geopolitics you need to be if you're going to get involved with oil all right it's that simple if not take a step back i always like it you know if volatility if volatility starts to explode um, it's like you could, it doesn't matter how big you are, how tough you are, but you're in a barroom brawl, you're going to get knocked out, right? So stay on the sidelines, pick your spots, trade the extremes, and you'll survive, all right? That's my advice on oil. Okay, so we're going to wrap up now. Um, I'm going to offer you all a free strategy session. We can talk about oil, commodities, anything you want, right? And I'm going to leave it in the comments section here. Just give me one sec. Um, if you give me a sec, I will do that for you. Um, and I've still got some things to show you. So if you bear with me, just using this amazing technology. Here we go. Can everyone see my Calendly link? Is that possible? I think I've just posted it in the comment section. So hopefully you can see all of that link. If you click on the link, book me in. Um, now I'm going to Dubai on Wednesday. So book me in maybe the week after. Um, if you're having any problem in trading commodities or you just don't, you want to know more about China or US macro or anything, book in a free strategy session with me um, and we can we can take a look at, see where you're going see see how i can help you with that journey um and take you take you further um so please do um post any questions you have for me and uh we can hopefully hopefully I'll, i can answer them i'm sure i will please do ask me anything you want while you're there just to let you know this is some of the things we do offer um we have our daily insight show which is the damage daily we cover oil commodities um you know gold um, but also currencies and, and and equities too that's a that's a fantastic um offering we have institutional insights delivered to your inbox we have it live so you can talk to me each day but also um our one-year ma master class our absolute master class it's our signature signature offering um which is fantastic um, we do we do one to one mentoring as well. So if you if you're interested in bring that um, drop drop the XTB um, people a line or, or bring that along. I do blog a lot on LinkedIn um, and we can certainly, uh, you know, 
um, or, or bring that to the Calendly uh, free strategy session if you if you you want to know more about what we can offer you. Um, but otherwise, just um, you know, please do ask. Mikey's life. Here we go. Let's just uh, come. I'm going to come back here. Okay. Um, what's your main strategy for trading oil supply and demand, support and resistance zones, trend line breaks, etc.? Um, okay, Mikey. It all depends, really. I'd have to technically look at it, and what I probably will do is. It's a case by case uh, situation. First of all, if you're looking at, I, I bang up the chart, I look at the chart. I generally look at the daily, um, sometimes a weekly, but I, I prefer, if it's WTI, I look on the daily. And with uh, supply and demand, I look at any OPEC meeting, make sure it's not, you know, not around. Um, and then I just focus on the technicals. So, Usually, I like mid, I like Bollinger Band. So if it's above the mid Bollinger Band, I tend to have a bias to be bullish. Um, I look at, I really like fibs, to be honest. Those are my support and resistance. They work for me. I'm not saying they work for everyone, but they work for me, and they're they're very good on long term as well. Um, yeah, good old fashioned trend line breaks. They're great as well. One thing I do do, which is actually what I learned trading oil futures is looking at volume and i'm not talking about open interest or anything like that i'm talking about actual volume under a level and if it's if it's traded a lot under the level and it breaks out above the level that to me is a perfect ledge and that is a really robust level um because essentially if it has clear rejection as well and it has volume above and below you know that old uh, adage if it's um you know support becomes resistance resistance becomes support these two things are really essential as well so so yeah i mean hopefully that's helpful uh mikey mikey's life um there's no that I, I don't always say oh I, I i do this i do that i always take it case by case because you know what because oil's so complex um you know it can be throw around anything so i just have to bear in mind this you know, I look at the, any imminent OPEC meeting. I look at the technicals um, and, uh, you know, and go from there. Hopefully that's helpful. Did everyone get my link for Calendly in the, in the chat? Hopefully you did. If you find we 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 close today and uh, you find oh my god I forgot to ask him something, bring it up in the in a one to one session. Obviously it's free, so um, please do you know hit me up and uh, go from there. Mikey, great, I love your questions by the way. Is there something that you use? Oh, you didn't see a link in the chat. Okay, um, let me just I'll post it again. Can you see it now? I've just posted it again. Well, what I can do is post it um, privately. Okay, that's I've sent that privately. So maybe uh, the team at XTB can post it on the chat for me. I've, I posted the link again just now. Um, I was just wondering if you can see it. So, Mikey, is there something uh, you use to help prevent entering a tr trade during a fake breakout, say a trend line, maybe retest of the line? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, that's a great question. Um, when something breaks, so, Mikey, this is to address your question. When something breaks, what I look for is a close above or below that break. Now, I'm, if I'm looking on the daily time frame, I want to close above or below that break on the daily time frame. If it comes back in within that break, that's a failure. Now, the classic for me 
is to close above or below that break to confirm it's a break. But the, the real cherry on the cake for me, Mikey, is I wait for the next significant level to break as well. That's the double confirmation for me. And here's the thing, right? If you've got a level and it breaks and you're like, oh, my God, I missed the move. It's really bad. Blah, blah. No, just relax. You can always trade. I would rather trade a smaller size when I've confirmed it's broken because you can always add to the size rather than trade a bigger size. Capture more of the move, but be in danger of a failure. If that, if that sort of makes sense, Mikey. Okay, so we've got some more here. Yeah, Joanna, so you can see that. That's great. Just uh, the link there. So book me in. It's free. You know, ask me anything you want. If you want to know more about what we offer, um, it's here. Um, obviously, we can, you know, we can get you not just with this, but with your career as well as a trade. If you want to look at what an institution does, I'm here as well. But if there's anything you really need to know about oil, about commodities, about gold, about trading all of those um, or, or, or currencies. That's my, you know, that's my bread and butter, really. Um, but equities too, fixed income, just let me know. Um, that's great. So you've all got that link now and you can all see it. Um, there it is there in case you want to copy it as well. So um, that's great. It's good to, good to know that. Um, yeah. So is there any other questions from the floor? Well, it looks like that's great. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. And and really, for me, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. And, you know, I just want to thank you all for attending. Um, you know, if there's anything you need, like I say, just ask. And, um, you know, I'm, I am on LinkedIn, Patrick Reader, Damas Principal. I blog a lot. Um, and, you know, you can check me out. You can connect with me. I'm pretty approachable. You know, I'm, I'm not this one of these institutional traders that, because I know what it's like, you know, I've been there. I was, I was a, you know, before I started.